The sun has been a critical area of strength for us, particularly of late, and it will go through a fundamental, besides captivating change, the reversal of its attractive field. This association happens for the most part at regular intervals, meaning the midpoint of the sunspot cycle. Also, it has wide repercussions for us here on Earth. As a matter of fact, quickly, the sun could make it conceivable to introduce a serious risk that could cause total disturbance and calamity for everyone in the world. As you will find, the sun's attractive field is made by the advancement of electrically charged gases in its inside, a cycle known as the solar dynamo. Over the long term, this attractive field turns out to be progressively tangled and reshaped in light of the sun's revolution and convective changes. Eventually, this cycle prompts a complete reversal of the attractive poles. The north attractive pole changes into the south attractive pole and vice versa. So, might we eventually analyze the whole cycle and explore the sun? The sun is essentially made of hydrogen and helium as plasma, a condition of matter where electrons are not bound to atoms resulting in a blend of free electrons and ions. The sun's inside is separated into several layers, with the core at the center, encased by the radiative zone and the convective zone. The core is the sun's most critical region, where nuclear fusion happens, changing over hydrogen into helium and generating huge amounts of energy. Over the core lies the radiative zone, where energy is moved outward through radiation. In this space, Energy moves slowly outward as photons are absorbed and re-emitted by the solar plasma. The outer layer of the sun's interior is the convective zone, where energy is moved by convection. Hot plasma rises toward the surface, cools, and sinks again, creating convection currents. The solar dynamo process works primarily in the convective zone and the tachycline, a thin layer that lies between the radiative zone and the convective zone. The tachycline is significant because it is where the sun's differential rotation and shear flows play a crucial role in producing the attractive field. Now, here's something fascinating that you probably haven't heard. The sun doesn't rotate as a solid body. Rather, various parts of the sun rotate at different rates, with the equator rotating faster than the poles, a phenomenon known as differential rotation. This differential rotation stretches and curves the attractive field lines, elongating the magnetic field. The solar cycle is around 11 years in length, during which the sun's attractive field undergoes a series of changes, culminating in the reversal of its poles. This cycle is driven by the solar dynamo and includes several stages. At the start of the solar cycle, the sun is in a state known as solar minimum, characterized by a low number of sunspots and minimal solar activity. The attractive field is generally simple and bipolar, with a clear north and south magnetic pole. As the cycle advances, the number of sunspots increases. Sunspots are areas of intense magnetic activity and are associated with the rise of magnetic activity from the sun's interior. These sunspots appear in pairs with opposite magnetic polarities and advance toward the equator over time. Around the midpoint of the solar cycle, the sun reaches solar maximum, a period of peak activity with the largest number of sunspots, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections. CMEs. The attractive field becomes increasingly complicated and tangled due to the continuous twisting and shearing from differential rotation and convection. As solar maximum fades, the attractive field begins to reconfigure itself. The reshaped and tangled magnetic field lines reconnect, and the global magnetic field gradually switches its polarity. The north magnetic pole becomes the south magnetic pole and vice versa. This cycle is facilitated by the movement and reorganization of solar plasma. After the pole reversal, the sun enters a period of declining activity, returning to solar minimum. Eventually, the magnetic field reconfigures again, and the cycle is ready to begin anew. Presently, we are in the solar maximum phase, and the sun's magnetic field is about to flip. During this phase, we can expect to see some activity from the sun that could be as dangerous as it is captivating. However, the sun's magnetic field reversal is not an abrupt flip. Rather, it is a continuous process. As the solar cycle progresses, the sun's magnetic field goes through a series of changes. At a certain point, the magnetic field becomes so wound and tangled that it reaches a tipping point and begins to reconfigure itself, leading to the flip. We do, however, know when the sun's magnetic field will flip. Scientists monitor the sun's magnetic activity using various instruments and techniques, 
observatories equipped with powerful telescopes, both on Earth and in space, provide detailed images of the sun's surface and its sunspots. Instruments like the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, SOHO, and the Solar Dynamics Observatory, SDO, measure the sun's magnetic field and its changes over time. One key indicator of a looming magnetic reversal is the behavior of sunspots. During solar maximum, sunspots appear more frequently and become more pronounced as they move toward the sun's equator, signaling that the magnetic field is becoming more unstable and is preparing to flip. While we're on the subject, let's dive a little deeper into sunspots. When the sun's magnetic field lines become wound and tangled due to differential rotation, the sun's equator rotates faster than its poles, causing the magnetic lines to stretch and bend. As these lines loop over the sun's surface, they suppress the convective movement of hot plasma from the sun's interior, resulting in the cooler, darker patches we see in sunspot images. Sunspots are not just fascinating solar features. They can sometimes produce powerful solar flares and coronal mass ejections, CMEs. These phenomena release massive amounts of energy and charged particles into space. When directed toward Earth, they can disrupt satellite communications, affect power systems, and pose risks to astronauts in space. Also, increased solar activity can enhance auroras, but it can also raise radiation levels in Earth's upper atmosphere. So, while we're on the topic, let's examine the difference between solar flares and coronal. Mass ejections, CMEs, while both are massive explosions of energy from the sun, they differ fundamentally. Solar flares are sudden, intense bursts of radiation caused by the release of magnetic energy associated with sunspots. They release huge amounts of energy and light, often as X-rays and ultraviolet radiation. Consider them bursts of brilliant light and heat on the sun's surface, like a massive explosion. In contrast, CMEs are enormous releases of solar wind and magnetic fields from the solar corona. They can be seen as giant bubbles of gas and magnetic fields being ejected into space. When a coronal mass ejection occurs, it sends billions of tons of solar particles into space at incredibly high speeds. While solar flares and CMEs are related, they are not the same. A solar flare can occur independently, but sometimes a very strong solar flare can be accompanied by a CME. However, a solar flare doesn't necessarily cause a CME. They can be associated with potential hazards. Solar flares can disrupt radio communications, navigation signals, and pose a significant risk to astronauts in space due to the intense radiation. On the other hand, CMEs can have a broader impact. CMEs can cause geomagnetic storms that disrupt power systems, satellite operations, and navigation systems. They can also enhance auroras but present serious risks to Earth's technology and infrastructure. Another consideration is that during times of high solar activity, the amount of high radiation reaching Earth also increases. Satellites and other spacecraft are especially vulnerable to raised solar activity. The charged particles from the sun can damage electronic parts, disrupt communication signals, and even alter satellite orbits. Beyond harming technology and infrastructure, what else can happen to the planet? While the sun's magnetic field reversal doesn't directly affect Earth's atmosphere, the related changes in solar activity can have an impact. Some studies suggest that variations in solar radiation can influence climate conditions and weather patterns. For example, increased solar activity can lead to a slight warming of Earth's atmosphere, potentially fueling existing climate change. Might auroras be the only positive aspect we experience here on Earth? Perhaps one of the most striking effects of increased solar activity is the enhancement of these remarkable lights. These natural light shows, known as the northern and southern lights, occur when charged particles from the sun interact with Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere. We often hear about the aurora borealis, but these lights can also be seen around the South Pole. During times of high solar activity, Auroras become more frequent and can be visible at lower latitudes, offering dramatic evening shows. However, aside from the beautiful auroras, there are also more disturbing aspects of the sun's magnetic reversal that could occur if we are ill-prepared. One of the primary dangers associated with a magnetic field reversal is the increased likelihood of geomagnetic storms. These storms occur when the solar wind, 
overloaded with charged particles, interacts with Earth's magnetic field. In extreme cases, they can cause widespread blackouts and damage to communication infrastructure. One such event occurred on the morning of September 1, 1859. Astronomer Richard Carrington was observing the sun through his telescope, as he had done many times before. However, what he saw on this particular day would go down in history as the first recorded solar storm. At 11.18 a.m., Carrington saw a brilliant flare of white light emanating from a group of sunspots. This event, now known as the Carrington Event, marked the beginning of the largest geomagnetic storm ever recorded. The white light Carrington saw was a massive solar flare, an intense burst of radiation caused by the release of magnetic energy stored in the sun's atmosphere. This flare was so powerful that it triggered a large coronal mass ejection, CME, directed toward Earth. The CME reached Earth in just 17. Six hours, an extraordinarily short time, considering the sun is 93 million miles away. When the CME hit Earth's magnetosphere, it triggered an unusually strong geomagnetic storm. The impact was quick and widespread, disrupting Earth's magnetic field and inducing currents in the ground. Additionally, transmission lines used as the backbone of global communication at the time experienced severe disruptions. Sparks flew from telegraph machines, operators were shocked, and some message stations even caught fire. The induced currents were so strong that operators could send and receive messages even after disconnecting their batteries. One of the most striking and noticeable effects of the Carrington event was the brilliant display of auroras. The auroras were so bright and widespread that they were visible far beyond the normal polar regions. People as far south as the Caribbean, Mexico, and Hawaii reported seeing the sky illuminated with vibrant colors. The auroras were so intense that they lit up the night sky, allowing people in the northeastern U.S. to read newspapers by their light. In the Rocky Mountains, gold miners were reportedly confused by the brightness, mistaking it for dawn and beginning to prepare breakfast. People described the sky as glowing with red, green, and purple hues, shifting and shimmering across the horizon. Now, imagine if a solar storm of the magnitude of the Carrington event were to hit Earth today. The consequences would be devastating. The sun is going through a massive change, the reversal of its magnetic field, a cycle that occurs roughly every 11 years as part of the solar cycle. This event, driven by the solar dynamo, could have sweeping ramifications for Earth, possibly causing disruption and disaster. The sun's magnetic field is created by the movement of electrically charged gases in its interior, producing a complex magnetic field that eventually switches its polarity. The sun is primarily made of hydrogen and helium plasma, with energy generated by nuclear fusion in its core. This energy is transferred outward through the radiative zone and then by convection in the outer layers. The solar dynamo, which operates in the convective zone and tachycline, generates the sun's magnetic field. Differential rotation of the sun, where the equator rotates faster than the poles, stretches and intensifies the magnetic field lines, driving the solar cycle. Currently, the sun is in the solar maximum phase, where sunspots and solar activity are at their peak, possibly causing hazards like solar flares and CMEs that can disrupt satellite communications, power systems, and pose risks to astronauts. Scientists monitor the sun's magnetic activity and sunspot behavior to predict when magnetic field reversals will occur. Sunspots, which result from tangled magnetic lines, can produce solar flares and CMEs, both enormous releases of energy that affect Earth in various ways. While solar flares release radiation, CMEs discharge massive amounts of solar particles into space. These phenomena can enhance auroras but also present significant risks to Earth's technology and infrastructure. The sun's behavior is a fascinating interplay of physics and natural phenomena, influencing not only our solar system but also life on Earth. Understanding the intricacies of solar activity is crucial, especially as we continue to rely on technology that can be impacted by solar events. The sun produces energy through nuclear fusion, converting hydrogen into helium, and releasing vast amounts of energy in the process. This energy passes through the various layers of the sun, eventually reaching the surface and radiating into space. Solar activity can appear in many forms, including sunspots, solar flares, 
and coronal mass ejections. Sunspots are cooler areas on the sun's surface caused by magnetic activity, appearing as dark spots. These variations in solar activity follow an approximately 11-year cycle known as the solar cycle, with periods of high activity, solar maximum, followed by calmer periods, solar minimum. During solar maximum, the number of sunspots increases, leading to more frequent solar flares and CMEs. Solar flares are sudden explosions of energy that emit radiation across the electromagnetic spectrum, including X-rays and ultraviolet light. These intense bursts can disrupt radio communications and pose risks to astronauts in space. CMEs, on the other hand, are massive releases of solar wind and magnetic fields that rise from the solar corona and are released into space. When directed toward Earth, these eruptions can cause geomagnetic storms that disrupt the planet's magnetic field, leading to beautiful auroras but also potential disruptions to technology. The effects of solar activity extend beyond space. They influence Earth's atmosphere and surface. Studies suggest that variations in solar radiation can impact climate patterns, potentially contributing to weather phenomena. Increased solar activity can also lead to atmospheric warming, a major factor in discussions about climate change. In addition, the potential for technological disruption due to solar storms cannot be underestimated. A severe geomagnetic storm could damage electrical systems, disrupt satellite operations, and affect navigation systems. Preparing for such events involves monitoring solar activity and developing strategies to mitigate their impact on infrastructure. Scientists continue to study the sun's magnetic field and its cycles to better predict when significant solar events may occur. This research combines ground-based and space-based observatories that track sunspots, measure magnetic fields, and study solar wind. With advancing technology, our ability to predict solar activity is improving, which is crucial for protecting our technological infrastructure and ensuring the safety of astronauts as we explore space. As we study the sun, its impact on Earth becomes increasingly clear. From the dazzling displays of auroras to the potential challenges posed by solar storms, the sun remains a powerful force in our local solar system. Understanding its cycles and behaviors not only advances our knowledge of space science, but also enhances our preparedness for the impacts of solar activity on modern life.